I think all we can say after watching episode 11 of Trigun Stampede is worst birthday ever. Like, this episode was one of those mind-blowing revelations where almost immediately it gets the ball rolling and it keeps revealing things at a steady enough pace. And once you finally feel like you're growing accustomed to what it's trying to explain, they throw another curveball at you. You more or less start this episode off with this like higher planes, this like extra dimension. You're like, okay, I'm, I'm cluing in. I'm seeing what you're saying. They're over here. These bodies are just kind of like a vessel and that's how you harness them for your energy. We, we can follow that, that's all well and good. And by the end of the episode, we're attack on plants. We literally have a giant plant monster that's the size of a titan about to crumble an entire city to ruin. Like, this show and this episode in particular was not playing. We literally are coming off of this emotional death with Roberto last week. And while yes, they kind of make him alive in this episode in a weird dreamlike way, I mean, this episode was just mind-blowing, and to see a city that was moments prior so full of life, the army's firing away, you have that dude who was clumsy in episode 1 eating his ramen as he's given the orders, and by the end of this episode it feels like an entire city's about to be burst into flames, or at the very least, crumbled like they're in the middle of the rumbling of Attack on Titan. This is a pretty mind-blowing episode, all things considered. Now, I do have a full live reaction available on my Patreon if you're interested in seeing my full uncut thoughts as I watch the episode. But otherwise, let's talk about this one, because this was an episode for the second-to-last episode of, guaranteed, the first season of the show. I'm very interested to see where it's going to try to leave us off, because... There's obviously been a lot of uncertainty with Vosh as a character, even before the revelation he was a plant. I mean, once they revealed that, of course, it went even more insane, especially with, like, the black hole thing that occurred, which obviously caused him to lose his arm when Knives cut it off. But to get an episode where, basically, you're getting connected to the mainframe. They're trying to plug into our boy. Last episode ends with him falling into a hole, and ultimately we see where that leads. They're in, like, those water bubbles that we saw the plants in before. They're trying to get to 100%. And he keeps fighting back, but the the way they went about exploring like almost the the memories because it's been a little fuzzy for the viewers. Of course, we know the general idea of how the ship crashed. We know the brother was responsible, and we know ultimately kind of like where the heartbreak and the dilemmas came up afterwards. But to really see it from an earlier stage before things really hit the fan, when you're looking at some of these memories, it doesn't feel like it was fake. You're looking at knives. You're looking at Vosh, and you're looking at their mother figure, and just. The fact that early on it didn't feel like there was anything, like maybe he was a little more skeptical than Vosh, but it didn't feel like it was a fake memory. But once they go into the room where they break the password and the fact that Vosh was the one to do it, and you see living plants, eyeball, a tongue, an ear, just a zombified looking body, the fact that these, you read the, the status as alive, you can't tell me that's living. You can't tell me that that is a living thing. But the fact that the readings say it still is, and the fact that, like, it's no wonder someone goes off the deep end. I gotta admit, if I'm looking at myself, and I'm similar to, or honestly identical to the people in the tube, even if this woman is saying she would never do that to you, I mean, it's hard not to imagine what other people would do to you if given the option, or if they learned that you're not human. And the fact that you just look at these images, and it's like, it's so conflicting. You don't think she's going to do anything, but we know what humans will do. And just the fact that it just all starts to click more and more as they're trying to break her boy's psyche. And the visual production was amazing. They had a lot of fun with special effects. Like, I mean, there's this one moment where they had kind of like a comedy direction of like the shiver going up the body, the way the ground would kind of crumble, almost like quicksand kind of dissolving. But the overall like wider shots of just seeing this, this kind of like time and space distortion and You'll see these memories, Vosh being haunted like PTSD, all the people he's unable to save in the past, whether way back in the day or rather recently, and it's pretty heartbreaking to watch it. And I love how for basically an info dump episode, really explaining everything about the concept of the plants, why the plants are being used, Vosh saying humans, this is their only option, they're basically stuck on this godforsaken planet and honestly both sides you can see them sort of making sense throughout the episode but by the end of it you just say even if you could stop this right let's just say we can stop the attack on titan colossal plant what then the city is going to be destroyed no matter what i mean it already looks like the the way the vines kind of come in that's basically wrapped around everything i highly doubt you can 
remove all that without destroying the buildings and potentially killing a lot of people. So let's just say they destroy it and ultimately some people get away. They're going to have to find a new place to live. They're still going to have to use plants in order to power themselves, their city, their facilities, right? And it's one of those things where we go back to that question, who's better for the planet, plants or humans? And unfortunately, if we look at where we currently stand, right, if humans continue to thrive on this planet, they'll have to use plants until some sort of other source makes it so they don't have to look like the test tubes that we saw in the horror scene that was their childhood. But if plants just win here, I mean, at the very least, the bloodshed stops sooner rather than later. And it's a hard thing to admit as a human, but man, it's hard not to look at what Knives sometimes says and be like, you know what, at this point, maybe, maybe Knives is, he, he's right at this point. Like, I don't like admitting that, but man, like, I just don't see how humans and plants coexist peacefully as it stands. But it was a shocking episode. It was a mind-blowing episode, a lot of information revealed, and the fact that after losing Roberto Merrill with her gun drawn, I mean, she can't even shoot shoot them free, it's bulletproof glass, and you shoot the professor here who looks like he's been manipulated himself, not gonna solve much anyway, like, for at least 100 years, he said, that he's been building into this moment, and by the end of the episode, it almost feels like there's a lot of regret in his mind, and man, this was not a pleasant episode for probably anyone other than Knives. Knives was the one person with a grin on his face actually enjoying the birthday party, Everyone else was wishing that the birthday party got cancelled, and I can't blame everyone else. I really liked what Studio Orange has done over these 11 episodes. I think it's an exhilarating show. I think it's thought-provoking. There's twists and turns. I mean, as someone who's brand new to this wonderful world, I mean, every time I looked at Trigun, to me it looked like a space western. Like, that's kind of what it looked like. A dude with a cool gun, he's wandering, doing some some lawless missions. And when you really look at where we're at currently with episode 11, Compared to where even Trigun Stampede started with the plants and the extra dimensions and everything that we're seeing, the show at first glance doesn't even do justice to what the show actually becomes, and that's what makes it such a fun twisting turn adventure, because I don't think anyone who's new to Trigun would ever expect a show like this to become what it currently is compared to where it looks like it starts out with this kind of like old school retro feel, oh, or is it we're a gunslinger in the Wild West with a little futuristic technology, and now we have Attack on Titan level colossal plants, we have black hole arms, knives cutting every which direction. It's absolutely insane, and I love it. But those are just my feelings. Let me know what you're thinking down below. Drop a like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new around here, and be sure to ring that bell so you can get notified when I upload on the channel. And of course, as I mentioned, we do have that full live reaction available on my Patreon. While you're there, you can also get a video shout out. So today, we have Nergareth, Jose, LC, Coconut, and Marion James E. Posada. So I appreciate the support, everyone. Please take care and have a good one.